here with a new Soloing Secrets and this is Jeff Beck and as I've admitted in other videos on this channel Jeff Beck's my favorite guitarist and has been for decades you know Eddie Van Halen definitely started the bonfire and kind of lit the lit the torch but then it was about my junior year in high school and I really fell into Jeff Beck's music I was reading a lot of interviews with him in guitar magazines of course guitar shop you know I fell into that and I just really liked his style it was so different than everybody else you know very signature sound and that remains true to this day. You know, nobody sounds like Jeff Beck. There's a lot of people that want to sound like Jeff Beck, and they try. But there's only one Jeff Beck. And Jeff Beck's legacy is legendary. He's part of the holy trinity of the British blues rock, you know, legends, with Clapton and Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck. And they were all members of the Yardbirds. And it's really interesting that those three players literally shaped everything that came after them you know, in the 70s, 80s, and beyond. And if you really want to do a deep dive with Jeff Beck, the first thing I'd recommend is check out his influences, you know, the players that inspired him, because you can actually find little bits and pieces of those players hiding in Jeff Beck's music. As far as Jeff's soloing secrets, you know, once again, just a reminder, soloing secrets, we're not really going to look at full solos. We're not looking at note for note, you know, reproductions of solos. We're kind of taking a step back and looking, it's almost like an overview. And we're looking at these common things that you'll find in Jeff Beck or, you know, so far we've looked at Billy Gibbons and David Gilmore. And I have a whole bunch of other players we're going to look at. But those things, like those little trademark signature things and habits that you find these players doing when they take a lead, they play a lick, pick up their guitar and do something, you'll hear and find these little kind of traits and little signature things that they like to do. And here's an image of some of the things that Jeff Beck likes to do. So one of the most notorious things about Jeff Beck is the fact that he doesn't use a pick. And he did, actually, in the beginning, like in the 60s and 70s, you can find photographs, you know, and footage of him using a pick. But then somewhere in the late 70s into the early 80s, he slowly stopped using a pick. And I think I read a quote somewhere that you know, like on stage, he would drop a pick and he'd have to walk all the way back to his amp to grab another pick. But in between, you know, where he dropped his pick and walking back to the amp, he would play with his fingers. And he said somewhere that he noticed he would go longer and longer before he finally made it to his amp. And then finally he just decided, you know what, I don't need picks because I just played like a whole set with my fingers. And that basically led him to investigating using a fingerstyle technique. And here's an image with some quotes from Jeff explaining, you know, why he likes to play fingerstyle. For the opening, that was me just jamming around with Rock My Plimsoll, which is from the album Truth. And that's a classic Jeff Beck moment. And there's actually an alternate version. Like, the album version's great, but there's an alternate version of that song that's a little bit faster. And Jeff actually, you know, kind of digs in a little bit more, in my opinion. I like the studio version, but I love that alternate version. Also, this entire lesson is going to be played finger style, so I'm not going to use a pick the whole time. You can definitely use a pick if you prefer, but you might want to investigate what Jeff does with his fingers. But the first thing we're going to do here is investigate some of Jeff's favorite scales, and then we can start manipulating, you know, those scales the way Jeff does. But the first thing we're going to talk about, I mean, he definitely plays lots of pentatonic scales, just regular, you know, minor pentatonic. <laughs> Tonic right there. And if this whole finger picking thing is kind of throwing you off, uh, you can actually practice that scale using your fingers like that. And there 
I was using thumb and index. I'm also, uh, I kind of prefer the middle finger a little bit sometimes. You know, like that. And you could also kind of, you know, cycle through those, like thumb, index, thumb, middle. But that's B minor pentatonic, right? So that's suitable for a minor chord. And you can also get away with that over seventh chords, you know, like B7. But you usually kind of flirt with that minor third, you know, over a seventh chord. But what Jeff likes to do, and he actually pioneered this back in the 70s, uh, playing alongside Jan Hammer, and that's the dominant pentatonic scale. So we're going to take, you know, B minor pentatonic. And we're going to raise the thirds. So we're going to basically change uh, D to D sharp. And it looks and sounds like that. And that gives it a much brighter, you know, dominant kind of flavor. So I have the TC Electronic Data Looper set up with a loop in B7. So you can hear the difference between the minor pentatonic and the dominant pentatonic. The loop sounds like this. And here's B minor pentatonic over the top of that. Sound. But you'll notice those thirds, that D note, sounds kind of sour. It really wants to be a D sharp. And that's basically what the dominant pentatonic is going to do. It's going to take D and change it to D sharp right there, like this. side-by-side -side comparison of those two scales and B minor pentatonic is first so take that scale and we're gonna raise the third D to D sharp and it magically transforms to B dominant pentatonic like this now that scale actually reveals uh, a very common element in Jeff's playing style and that's those quirky bends where he frets a note and picks it and then grabs a note a half step lower usually Sometimes it's a whole step, but usually it's like a half step lower. And then he'll bend the note that's lower a half step higher to match the note that he fretted. So it's this really quirky, weird, blurry, you know, sound. But there's like a little highway of notes, and you can kind of see where Jeff grabs some of those licks, like this. And there's the E, and you're grabbing D sharp, and then he kind of plays with that. grabbing A and then grabbing that G sharp and then bending that to A. And do it again right here. There's E and D sharp. Jeff's also a big fan of hybrid pentatonic scales, and we're going to talk about those. We're also going to move to the key of D just to get away from B. So here's D minor pentatonic right here. And take that and raise the thirds, F to F sharp, you know, minor third to major third, and that's D dominant pentatonic now. And then for the hybrid pentatonic, there are different hybrid pentatonic scales. And we're going to basically incorporate the minor and major third, the flat five, and the major seven. So it's kind of like everything in the kitchen sink, so to speak. Something like that. One more time. Mix 
mixing all those notes around in different ways. And um, I'm going to show you some licks using the hyperpentatonic. But it's really important to kind of realize, you know, what you're doing there. And there's the major third. There's the flat five. There's the major seven. There's the flat five again. And right here, there's the sixth. There's your money notes because that's the most common area of that hybrid scale. So one of Jeff's big secrets, which really isn't a secret, he recorded an entire rockabilly album, but he has rockabilly influences. You know, he loves Gene Vincent and Cliff Gallup and that era of rockabilly. And, um, you know, that's where some of these ideas in the hybrid pentatonic scale comes from. So if you take that hybrid and you can find, you know, Brian Setzer and there's a whole bunch of people that play with that. Van Halen definitely did too. But definitely Jeff likes that scale. So right there we're just literally coming down and using pull-offs. You know, totally a rockabilly lick. I think Les Paul and some players like that too. And we're literally just racing down. Too. You could do or something like that. And that last lick is actually similar to a lick that's in She's a Woman from the Blow by Blow album, and that's in the key of A. And the lick's something like this. One more time. And right there, you're doing. Interesting the way he ends it too, but the first part, and then, and then do that first uh, that first move again on the B string, and then right here, and I like the way he kind of just smears and slides to the final note. Something like that. And I think he's actually using a pick because that was on Blow by Blow. Big part of Jeff's style is just his phrasing, you know, the way he puts his licks and phrases and melodies and all these things together. It's very unusual, very different than the normal, you know, kind of blues bass guitarist. He doesn't really play any stock licks. I mean, he does, but it's like he camouflages them and he changes them around. And here's a very basic phrase. This is from Where Were You from the Guitar Shop album. And it's very, you know, simple. It's based around pentatonic scales, but it's just the way he put it together. It really speaks to you, you know, like this. You know, I mean, that's gorgeous. It sounds like something, you know, you might hear a vocalist or somebody sing, but it's Jeff on guitar. And I know the first time I ever saw that lick, it was really unusual because you're ascending minor pentatonic, but you're descending in the notes, so it's kind of backwards. little twist of those notes really made that jump out. And then move that up a minor third. And you're basically ending on that B flat right there. That's a great, you know, classic song. But just little moments like that where it's, you know, it's really simple but it really stands out and just grabs you. And speaking of Guitar Shop, how about the song Guitar Shop? There's a really weird, you know, melodic phrase in that song, and it almost sounds like somebody asking a question, but it's Jeff and his guitar. You know, something like that. And he's literally grabbing a G, grabs an E and dips his bar, and then he basically grabs a C and bends that up a half step. And then he basically grabs an open A to a B and then bends that up a whole step to C sharp. Which is so weird. Like that. You know, one thing Jeff likes to do with the fingerstyle technique is he likes to snap the strings and he pulls, you know, away from the guitar body. Like 
like that. And you can hear this in Behind the Veil from the Guitar Shop album, something like this. away from the body of the guitar and you get that snappy kind of sound and that totally has like a reggae kind of uh, you know island kind of feel and then that little and he's literally like I said snapping the strings and finally we're going to talk about phrase variations and just making variations of phrases as you're playing them. And a great example of this is Because We Ended As Lovers, you know, which is a classic, once again. And during that song, Jeff is, you know, stating this melody, but it seems like every single time he plays it during that song, he changes something. Like maybe it's, you know, he adds a bend or he slides or it repeats a note a little different. And these little slight variations. So that melody is something like this. <laughs> He does some variations there. And like I said, every time he comes around to that, that melody, he changes it ever so slightly. Something is a little different. So if you haven't worked on that song before, dive in because we ended as lovers and really study his phrasing, like the way he sets up some of those phrases and those little subtle changes between the different you know, parts of that song. All right, that's gonna wrap this episode of Soloing Secrets with Jeff Beck, and I was really nervous putting this together because I've you know, admitted that Jeff Beck's my favorite guitarist, and when I started putting this together, I thought, oh no, everybody's gonna expect me to be Jeff Beck or something. And my you know, respect for him and my claim of him being my favorite guitarist really is more respect and his legendary status. I mean, I love his music, I love his licks and phrases, I've learned lots of his songs, but I don't really try to mimic him. I'm not trying to be Jeff Beck. I just really love him and his music. I find him really interesting, an interesting human being, and an interesting musician too, of course. Really, it kind of goes without saying, but if you're looking to shake things up in your playing and you want to learn some different approaches or phrases and ideas, Jeff Beck is your guy, totally. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to the Net Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.